good. Great. So we're here today with Nina Nesbitt. Uh, you've just released your uh, your new album called Elska on September 2nd. So nice to hear the Swedish pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the south part as well, so it's very Elska. <laughs> yeah, it sounds different. Uh, yeah, it is. It does. Yeah, I like it. Good. I feel actually very privileged to to talk to you about your album because... I said to my colleague, I think it's one of the best albums I've heard this year so far. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank yeah, you. it really, it really, really is. Um, so I'll just start out with like the most obvious question. How does it feel to have your new album released? Um, it feels great. It feels like a huge relief, like yeah. a huge weight off because... Um, obviously I've been making it for so long and there was loads of delays due to the pandemic yeah. and stuff so it just feels so nice to finally have it out and also like I made a lot of it behind closed doors because yeah. I wasn't on tour yeah. so that was yeah that was really different as well so it's so nice to get feedback and hear that people actually like it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely I usually say uh, that when you release songs that you've been working on for so long it's kind of like you've needed to sneeze for a very long time and then finally you get to sneeze yeah well funnily enough I actually have a cold so I've been sneezing all week well <laughs> but you know good <laughs> metaphor <laughs> definitely so you've uh, have you have you had like a good response this you've it's been out for like a little over a week yeah or really exactly really good week? yeah good really good um it's been so nice to hear what songs have connected to people as well it's yeah. interesting to hear what ones people have picked up on because they're always the unexpected ones yeah of course I um it's a very I think I've had it on repeat for since you released it and it's it's very emotional but also very dynamic in the like music arrangement so mm -hmm. it's like upbeat songs and then you get very uh like emotional it's a roller coaster but a very nice roller coaster <laughs> it is yeah yeah I thought it'd be too much to just have depressing ballads originally yeah. I just wanted it to be like quite a chilled album and then I was like this is too depressing I need some upbeat <laughs> pop songs <laughs> well you did some good ones on there so it's a good balance I think <laughs> um so there there is 12 tracks um which one of them if you had to choose I get that's very hard but do you have a favorite one like some that's more like close to heart yeah do you know a few people have asked me this that honestly yeah. couldn't I couldn't tell you because I, I just don't have a favorite I feel like they're yeah. all so different it's like depends what mood I'm in um, yeah. but it's interesting to see like um a lot of people seem to like um teenage chemistry wow. heirlooms and older guys seem to be your yeah. fan favorites yeah. I don't know I really couldn't pick I've uh, been I, I also really like the uh, older guys because I think the lyrics are very powerful but still heartbreaking and smart and it fits it, your voice fits very well with the arrangement of the music and that's something I really like oh, but, I, but I do think Elska is my favorite ah the Swedish one <laughs> the Swedish one I don't know why it's but I don't it's something I, th I think it's the whole production it's the uh you know every little bit of it that has come together for for something really powerful I think so that's Thank probably you. my favorite interesting yeah <laughs> is there any song that was like more difficult to finish that was like not obvious that uh, from the beginning that it was just a bit yeah, hard I think to... a lot of them were just like older guys heirlooms teenage chemistry even like all of those they're literally the writing demos they were just like yeah. the day one yeah this feels good let's keep it because I think when you go back and like pick things apart they kind of lose their magic sometimes yeah, but um definitely. the hardest one was a limited edition because yeah. I wrote that in 2019 not even really for the album and at the last minute I was like I just want another upbeat on there I just feel like we need something to break it up um and yeah it was really difficult to like get that fitting in the album so we had a few back and forths but I think we got there in the end 
Yeah, you really did. It's really nice. Well, <laughs> did you, um, cause the, how did you come up with the intro? Cause that's the very intro. interesting The the, when everybody says, I love you in so many different languages. And it's, it, I was, it's the perfect intro for, for this album, but I was like, how did you come up with this and how did you make it? What, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I kind of just wanted to do an experiment. So I asked on my TikTok and Instagram, like, can people please send me them, like a voice note of you saying, I love you in your native language. So like you could say it to your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Yeah. You could just say it into the phone. You could, whatever way you want to say it, say it and like kind of capture a moment. And yeah, I so just people felt- said it to someone. And yeah, so, oh, like, there's a story nice. behind each one really. And um, some of it's the people involved in the record. That was my original plan to have everyone who's involved in the record doing it. And then I thought, why don't we extend it to the people who are going to be listening? Because I yeah. feel like, having the album called El Scar is like is such a um well probably not to you but to an English speaking person it's like what's that how do I connect to this album yeah. so I wanted a track that people could hear their own language and think yeah. oh it's my album as well do you know what I mean yeah of course that's a that's a really cool story that's and it's it gets very um like it opens up for everyone to have like a personal connection to your album yeah, exactly Which- so cool. Well, I, there was a lot of Swedish uh, elskar in there. It's a yes. it's a weird word. <laughs> in Swedish, it sounds weird, but it's it's also kind of nice. <laughs> I feel like anyone I speak to says it differently as well. Yeah, it, it's really it sounds very different. But you're you're half Swedish, right? Yeah, so half Swedish, half Scottish. Um, yeah. my mum's Swedish, and my family live in Marsta. Ah, that is up north near Stockholm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. We say Marsta. 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 We have these really weird R's. R. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, it's. I've been learning the language. Obviously, like as a kid, I knew how to say a few things, but. Yeah. I started properly learning it in lockdown it's just so difficult yeah. it's so like I can't believe how well you all speak English and Swedish <laughs> it's so difficult um, we start learning English when we're like I think I was eight when I started learning English in school like I was in second grade or something yeah so, it's amazing <laughs> I'm like how <laughs> But when is um have you been a lot to Sweden? Work like work with music here, a lot of Swedish musicians. So I mainly just came to visit my family like twice a year since yeah. I was born. And then um I think it was like 2019. Mm-hmm. I said, why have I never worked in Sweden? Because obviously they have such a great reputation for being amazing songwriters. And so I went over to see my gran and then during the day I would go in Stockholm and write and I just mm-hmm. instantly clicked with everyone and yeah. it was really interesting because I was meeting people my age that were doing the same thing yeah. and I was like oh my god like is this how I'd be if I grew up here like it was yeah. just so interesting to think yeah. um and yeah I just loved it I feel like Swedes are so um good at melodies and production and then I can kind of be left to the lyrics which is yeah, nice well, that's good. yeah yeah so you get the really personal part because I have to say I was stunned by your lyric writing. Oh, it's um, I've I am a musician myself, and I uh, one of the things that really grabs me is when someone is good at writing smart lyrics that means something, but it's not always obvious what it means. Mm. Uh, yeah. And you're really good at that. It's very stunning lyrics. So you should you should really have that as uh, something that makes you stand out actually thank you very much yeah yeah I just love love writing in Sweden for that reason it's great well that's good then we will hopefully have you here playing live eventually yeah I'm playing actually in December you do yeah I have my first headline show in Stockholm (gasps) that's cool I couldn't tell you the date but I can find out and let you know yes please my colleague uh she lives in Stockholm uh, okay. And I live in Mal. I live in Lund, 
near Malmö, if you know where it is. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it would be lovely to to see you make a live review because we love doing live yeah. reviews. It's we live for the live music here at Definitely. Tinsel, so. It's uh, it's an acoustic show, so it'll be very chilled and yeah, it'll be good. Love that. What would you say have has been because you've been in the music industry for quite a while uh, since yeah. you're, you're only 28, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you've been releasing music and done written music and collaborations. And um, is there anything with this new album that you feel really stands out with your previous releases? I think the lyrics have matured and like, yeah. I think it's. I've read a few of the reviews, the nice reviews. <laughs> and a lot of them have said it's like the most mature record, which I would agree with. Yeah. So I think the lyrics have just got quite deep on this one. And I think yeah. especially because it was written, some of it was written in this room and kind of on my own, away yeah. from, you know, over Zoom or whatever, away from the studio, yeah. the lyrics have become more personal because of that. Um, but yeah, I think I've just been... I don't know less fearful to write what I want to write yeah that's good I think like the music have matured with you so maybe you know you get more uh more more honest and uh, brave with time maybe when you write yeah just like I think so I think I love artists that tell the truth and are so honest with their lyrics and are like almost a bit uncomfortable because they're so honest like that's what I love yeah. about music so I was like well I want to try and do that so yeah, yeah, that's yeah you I did I was when I listened to after after I listened to the album a couple of times I was like well this this hits kind of close to home with some of this song like oof but I, yeah. I, I have to have a little bit of a break pause and just like and then I keep <laughs> on listening because sometimes you, you just like um can relate to the music and we're the same age so I think yeah for for me uh it was uh it, that's probably why I think it's also so good that it was a long time ago since I really could relate to an album and the stories yeah, uh, yeah well that's good for us in this age that's uh that's kind of what we need after this pandemic we need uh yeah uh, music that feels close to home I feel like it's a strange age as well. It's like, yep. we're not quite like adult, adult, but we're not, you know, adolescents coming of age. And I really yep. want us to try and capture that because I feel like people shy away from getting older and writing about those things. Yeah, yeah it's kind of the album like uh, normalizes that in between thing when you're, mm. I feel kind of like a teenager, but I, probably should grow up but I don't feel a lot grow up but I'm probably gonna <laughs> yeah it's a weird one <laughs> it's a perfect album to have a glass of wine too I okay. I do that yeah. or a it's few <laughs> maybe two <laughs> a you bottle. know perfect glass of wine and then I was like this I'm gonna <laughs> 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 but do you feel like uh, you've had when you created this album have you had uh, any like different uh influences or what, what what has like your musical influences or or genres or something that have been more prominent for you making this album um you know the last album I listened to a lot of like R&B stuff and that was really like my R&B discovery phase <laughs> um so that kind of influenced that and then this album I would say like was actually so influenced by country music Yep. not sonically but just mm -hmm. the storytelling and yeah. a lot of like Scottish folk music I can't really pick out any mm -hmm. specific artist but just that kind of storytelling feel yeah. has definitely been a huge influence and then also just like Sweden as a country like yeah. the winters and you know Elskar like the kind of um the sound of that I wanted it yeah. to sound like a Swedish winter so definitely like a few influences but country music mainly for the the storytelling I went to Nashville for two weeks I didn't actually write any songs there apart from limited edition but um I just felt so inspired by being there just hearing the songs um and I wrote like all the lyrics for Colors of You when I was there and and then I took it 
to another session but yeah just I'm always so inspired by their little twists that they yeah. do that's cool because I, I understood also that you've talked a bit to your grandmother uh, about we, some one of the songs kind of seemed a little bit about her or or um, mm -hmm. yeah, the storytelling yeah dinner table that you were sitting with her and talking about like her I got the feeling you were talking about like her growing up and her stories and were inspired by that yeah um, how does she feel to be your your muse for that song <laughs> or for this album um yeah I think she likes it she likes the upbeat songs yeah. or like the big ballads but yeah. um I think a she likes a powerful woman she likes She's, the power <laughs> she does she is an icon I tried to get my friend to translate it with me yeah but we really struggled to make it like smooth so yeah, okay. I hope she understands the yeah. song she did say she liked it and well. she's very unfazed <laughs> by it all she's yeah. just yeah she's living her life <laughs> yeah that's cool because you you under you understand when she speaks Swedish yeah so since I was learning it in lockdown I can like pick out at least a few words from each sentence to to construct you know yeah. what she's saying and I feel like I learned so much more about her in the past couple of years yeah. which is really cool definitely definitely so you're um if if someone is about to hear El Scout for the first time, they haven't heard anything about it or anything, you, you're just gonna, how would you introduce it to make them want to listen? It is about love in all its raw forms. And it has, it's like full of stories. It's an open diary. And if you like drama, then you should listen to it. <laughs> well, that's great. I, I would definitely, I would be so curious and was like, well, give me the dirt then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if it's your diary, then I want to know. <laughs> what are you looking forward to like doing next? If we're, Cause you're going on tour in yes. December. Then what, what happens? Like, do you have any hopes for next year writing music or what's the plan for? Yeah, I'm going to start the next record now. I already have the name and all the visuals. So I just wow. got to write the songs. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then obviously the tour. I'm really yeah. excited to play my first headline show in yeah, Stockholm, which will, be, which will be great. Um, yeah. And yeah, just keep putting music out, really. Well, how do you, because you said you've already have the title for your next album and the visuals. How do you, how's the creating a song for you, the process? How do you start? Just kind of not think about it and just write until I write yeah. one that I'm like, okay, that's for an album yeah. or like that's the start of something. Yeah. But yeah, it's always an exciting time to start an album because it really could go in so many different directions. Definitely. But do you like start writing lyrics and then build from that or can it start with like a melody or it's, it's you totally more... totally depends yeah, okay. it's sometimes production yeah. sometimes a lyric it's yeah. really just random yeah yeah that's the cool thing about music you can like get um inspired by i i uh read that um uh, billy eilish one of her song bad guys she was inspired by the um the rhythm of a traffic light because she was she was gonna go over uh, uh, the road and there was a traffic light and she was like dick, 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 dick. Oh, and then she cool. got <laughs> so it's cool with music that you can like get inspired by anything yeah. absolutely anything literally anything I think you've just yeah. got to look for it and then it'll present yeah. itself yeah that's cool I have actually um not uh, written that much more questions for you because I wanted to make it I know we've had a, a long week of promotion talking about the album but I want to say that uh, over after listening to the album my like verdict <laughs> what do you say is I think it's absolutely stunning I think more people should write with such a it just feels like a raw hard the, like a raw heart it's pure uh, it comes from 
like very honest um yeah thank you so I'm really I, glad that you've heard it that way yeah, yeah what really was intended <laughs> yeah we get a lot of music sent to us every day and it really stood out for me so thank that was you. why I really wanted to just chat with you about how it was made and and uh what inspired it and because that kind of music inspires me as well so mm -hmm. I hope I will oh, get nice. back to writing after oh nice <laughs> oh thank you so much it's really nice to hear that you've um yeah connected to it in that way definitely but I have to uh like finish this off with a since it's a Swedish music magazine is there um any Swedish mu Swedish musicians or music that you really like that that uh has, yeah actually yeah, that you listen to a lot or something one of so there's a few artists, Swedish artists, that I worked with on this. One of them's called Lonely Twin. Okay. Um, her name's Maddie Eliasson and okay. Madeline Eliasson. Yeah. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's called Lonely Twin. It's yeah. really, really good. Um, and then I also work with Shai Martin, yeah. who's one of my favourite Swedish singers. Yeah. In yeah, so there's yes, been a few. Sure Good. Well, that's nice to hear. And probably, hopefully, you will be here a lot making music uh, next year as well and, and like in the future. Definitely. And hopefully, we will see you playing live because we really want to do that. Yes, definitely. Come along. We will. Thank you so much, Nina, for taking your Thank time you. to talk to me about your music and the best okay. of luck um, to continue this release. and uh hopefully we see you in stockholm in december thank you vi ses vi ses ha det gott hejdå